Honorable Minister for Foreign Affairs, Dr. Bella, Acting Dean of the Diplomatic Corps, Excellencies, Members of the Diplomatic Corps. It is with great pleasure that I meet you here today to extend my warmest wishes to you and your families for a prosperous and peaceful new year. I would like also to take this opportunity to convey my heartfelt greetings and best wishes on my behalf and on behalf of the people of Malta to your respective heads of state. I express my gratitude to the many ambassadors resident here in Malta for your insistent work amongst us and to the non-resident ambassadors, I truly appreciate your contribution, even though from further away. Let me begin my remarks by thanking each one of you for the work you are doing to build mutually enriching and peaceful relations between our different nations. Each and every one of us has the responsibility at every level of society to act in ways that encourage respectful dialogue while promoting peace and well-being. The pursuit of peace is fundamental to your work as ambassadors. While you represent the best interests of your countries, the reality of peace must go beyond the physical boundaries of our nations. It is necessary to transcend across all borders. Peace is necessary in the life of each and every human being. Peace must be made the standard, the benchmark, and the objective by which our governments measure their success. It is through their work for peace that our governments must derive their ultimate and essential right to govern. Without peace, there can never be social inclusion and sustainable prosperity. On the other hand, without well-being, there can be no effective economic or social development between and among our family of nations and peoples. How can we speak of effective and meaningful peace if we do not have a solution to very obvious challenges? How can we speak about effective and meaningful peace in a world that is experiencing unprecedented upheavals and violence? How can we aim for effective and meaningful peace when we are confronted by the suffering of the marginalized, the excluded, and the oppressed? How can we speak of effective and meaningful peace when there are whole families who do not have the necessary sustenance for their children? How can we speak of effective and meaningful peace when individuals live in fear and are sometimes forced to flee from situation, situations of extreme conflict? How can we speak of effective and meaningful peace when people experience precarity and exclusion from the benefits of social and cultural life? I am hopeful that Malta's presidency of the Council of the European Union will provide a platform from which to address these crucial challenges. For this reason, I believe that the active involvement of all stakeholders, and in particular civil society, throughout Malta's presidency is crucial and necessary. I believe that the vibrant community of non-governmental organizations, faith groups, and social collaborators at work in Malta and across the European Union will positively enrich the proposed program. The voice of civil society can ensure that our conversations remain centered on the most pressing question of all. How, can, how we can, together, create more equitable systems which restore dignity to the social, economic, political, and cultural lives of all people. If we want, as nations, to be true to ourselves, we must be resolute in our commitment to safeguard the fundamental rights and freedoms of every individual across the globe by ensuring that they are truly universal. Allow me to quote my friend and colleague, the newly appointed United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, and I quote, 
Let us resolve to put peace first. Let us make 2017 a year in which we all, citizens, governments, leaders, strive to overcome our differences. From solidarity and compassion in our daily lives to dialogue and respect across political divides, peace must be our goal and our guide." Unquote. I am so pleased that Antonio Guterres, in his very first speech as United Nations Secretary General, explained the importance and significance of peace in such a perfect way. Peace is the greatest need of our time. We must reassert it at every opportunity. As nations, we must never allow ourselves to become complacent about the gains and successes we have made in terms of human rights, of environmental justice, and of social inclusion. These are treasures that we cannot afford to lose. We must strengthen the forces of, modera of moder moderation in every society, nurturing spaces in which reason, truth, and harmony can flourish. We cannot continue to allow the voices of extremists who advocate falsehoods, fear, and violence to go unchallenged. Our thoughts and deeds must be directed by the simple but profound principle that we should treat others as we ourselves would like to be treated. This golden rule applies to the relationships between our nations as much as it does between our communities, within our families, and in our own individual daily lives. We need to encourage a global ethic of well-being that must work in synergy with a global social solidarity approach to touch the lives of each one of us, no matter where we come from or our circumstances. There are the, these are the values that we must hold sacred in the face of hostile populism and against the angry and aggressive rhetoric of demagogues. We cannot allow these demagogues to have the last word when, when we know that peace is the ultimate solution for our peoples to prosper in well-being. No single individual or nation can stand alone. We are strongest when we celebrate and share the diversity of our experiences and stand united. We must recognize and acknowledge that the social, ecological, and moral problems we face are global in their implications. Therefore, we must also globalize our actions towards the building of ethical standards and our values of respect, of peace, and of well-being. In this way, as people of influence and the implementers of policy, we can respond to today's realities by working towards sustainable peace, which will ensure far-reaching prosperity and meaningful well-being for the benefit of all. I encourage you not just to be the excellent diplomats that you are, but also active and effective agents of peace for your countries and among our nations. Thank you.